Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV, and I want to talk about an advanced topic, which is recursion. And this is when we're working with functions that call themselves. So they actually are written so that they make a, another function call to themselves, and this can repeat until a certain condition. Now, we don't want to do this with every function that we write, because if we did it with a function that wasn't set up to work by calling itself, it would keep calling itself and then the the app would actually crash because it would run out of memory and it would just stop. So what we're gonna have to create here is a, a special method that's going to call itself but have a way of stopping when we reach an end condition. So we'll use a conditional to to stop the function calls and then return something back. So let's look at a basic example. We're gonna implement a space shuttle countdown timer and so we're going to display a number, then we're going to subtract one, and then we're going to repeat steps one and two. And we're going to keep on doing this until we get zero. We don't want to have a negative number on our countdown timer. We just want to count down from like five, four, three, two, one, zero, and then we're done. Let's take a look at some of the code. So I'm going to create a new function, and it's going to be called countdown. It's going to have a void return type, so it's not going to return any values then it's going to take a single parameter that's an integer, which is the number. And the number is our current digit on the countdown timer. All right, so our base case is going to be when it's zero. And so when number is equal to zero, that's when we're going to take off. And so we use the double equal sign, so it's uh, equality here. And then we're going to print out the message NSLog take off to the console. Our next condition is, okay, it's not yet zero, and so what do we do? We're going to print out t minus, then the number of seconds, and then we calculate the next number. And so we say int next number is equal to number minus one. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna actually make a function call to ourself. So we're gonna say countdown. We're gonna pass in the next number, which will be one less than our current value, and it's gonna repeat. And so if I gave you a starting number like five, you would have five, we'd come into here, we'd look at the if, the first if isn't true, so we go to the else, and we'd say, okay, t minus five seconds, and then next number is gonna to equal to five minus one, which is four, so we're gonna call countdown with four. Then we'll repeat, we'll jump back to the top, we'll check our first if statement, we'll say four is equal to zero, no, so we go to the else, then we get to NS log, t minus four seconds, next line is, Next number is equal to four minus one, which is three. Then we repeat the call to three. We go to the top. No, is three equal to zero? No, so we go to the else. And it prints out t minus three seconds. Our next number is equal to three minus one, which is two. We call countdown with two. We check our if statement at the top. Is two equal to zero? No, so we go to the else. Then we print out t minus two seconds. Next number is equal to two minus one. We call countdown with one. We go to the top. Is one equal to zero? No, so we go to the else. Then we print out t minus one second. And next number is equal to one minus one, which is zero. So now we call countdown with zero. We go to the top. Is zero equal to zero? Yes, that's true. And we print out take off. Now there's no more calls to countdown. And so what's gonna happen is we're gonna jump all the way to the bottom and you see that bottom brace that just appeared. That's where the flow is gonna go and then all of the stack frames that were created are gonna be popped off. So let's take a look at what this looks like uh, now that we step through the code. Again, this is just gonna repeat sort of the process I went through when we were just talking about the code. So in main, we pick a starting number and we call countdown. Then that throws on another stack frame with countdown of five as a parameter, which then creates four and calls it again, and calls it again, and calls it again, and again. And we're almost there and we're calling countdown with zero. Now here's where we reach that base condition or our end condition, and we can stop the counter, we can print off, take off, 
And now the stack frames are going to disappear because they're done. And when the last one is done, then our main method is done because we have no more code to execute. And that's all. So let's go ahead and write this in Xcode. 